Homeway! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. the Civil War, emigrants from both the North and the South made their homes in the western United States. Old battles led to new feuds, but the masked rider of the plains united the wares of the blue and the gray under one banner. It was his vision of the future that made them comrades at arms. It was his force of leadership that brought victory to their common cause, the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's trouble on the trail ahead! We've got to hurry! I know Silver! Away! <laughs> Shortly after sundown, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, were riding the trail toward Malpass. For once, Silver and Scout did not respond to the urging of their masters, and the reason became apparent when a thunder of hoofs came from the ridge ahead and shaggy figures hurtled down the slope. Tonto, they heard a buffalo on the stampede. Get Scout back. Ah, them come past out of the way before they trample us underfoot. Back, Scout. Uh, Silver. With that break in the rocks, Kimosabe. There are plenty of buffalo. Kill him up, Scout. In here, Silver. This good. Far enough, Kimosabe. The buffalo won't turn this way. Scout, oh, oh, oh. Oh. Now look at them, Tonto. Thousands of buffalo. Now, oh. them gone now. But there are others beside the buffalo, Tonto. That noise in the woods behind us. Oh. Animals all going in one direction, Kimosabe. You know what that means? Oh, Tonto, no. No wonder our horses are nervous. I can even smell the smoke now. Come along. We'll get to the top of the rise and see how bad it is. Maybe so we turn now. Huh? There's no immediate danger, Tonto. We can always reach the river before the fire can catch us. First, let's see how big it... Look, Tonto. The whole western side of the valley. Oh, plenty fire. Big flame. No wonder the animals were in a panic. It come cross prairie fast. Maybe we go to river now, huh? Yes, Tonto. The water will protect us. Yes, we'll go in... No, Tonto. Uh Huh? Look, those two cabins in the middle of the valley. Oh, me not see them before. You can see them clearly in the flames now, Kimasabi. There may be people in those cabins, Tonto. It's too late now. Fire come fast. We've got to take a chance, Tonto. We must get to those cabins before the flames. Come on, Silver! Come on, Silver! Away! The Lone Ranger and Tonto raced through the long prairie grass straight toward the oncoming flames. The fire roared and crackled as it swept down on the unprotected cabins. The Silver and Scout were faster than the flames. Fire into the air, Tonto. Shoot their gun off. Warn them there's trouble. Get the other cabin, Tonto. I'll rouse this one. Hurry. Uh, Tonto, go home. In, in the cabin. Fire. Prairie fire. Get out. What is it? 
Uh, what thunderation? Who fired them shots? Get to your horses. The prairie's in flames. Uh, Stars is right. You're right. Where's the police? Uncle Carter, he's in the next cabin. Hey, where's Sally? Uncle Carter, you got out. Yeah, the red skin rose me up. Oh, we go past. We got horses. They're saddled up. Here, Sally, honey. Let me give you a hand up on your horse. Oh, do it. Get away, Josh. Get away yourself, you old sessionist. Yes. Let's see, Sally. This ain't no time to argue. Here. You're in the saddle. Uh, thanks, mister. Them two always fight in the Civil War. Fire, no fire. On your horses, mount. Fire comes close. Yes, sir, the wind's rising. The flames are coming forth like a pack of hungry wolves. Faster, faster. We've got to reach the water before the fire gets us. We'll never make it. Never. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. I reckon we're safe now, mister. It's in the rain any second. And stay right here until it does, all of you. And the fire's still coming. We must stay in the middle of the stream. I'll bet you it was Carter started the fire. He was always... Ah, what in tarnation's that? Something jumped right on my back. It's uh, 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 raccoon, that all. Raccoon? <laughs> squirrel? Cannibal? The whole river's full of animals. Trying to save themselves from the fire. Sure, sure. Wouldn't have been no fire in the first place, except for your Uncle Carter. No, look here, Josh Brandon. Are you insinuating? I ain't insinuating nothing. I'm coming out flat-footed and declaring that you started this year fire. Why, you old... You old northerner, you? No man can say that to me. Just a minute. This is no time for quarreling. Leave me be, mister. Now, welcome to a frazzle. Sure, leave him come. I'll lick him the way we did at Gettysburg. I'll make you run like you did at Bull Run. No doggone rebel is... There ain't a Yankee yet can whoop us fair. I'll show you. That's enough, both of you. They don't mean no harm, mister. The war between the South and the North is over. We're not fighting it again. The fire was started by Carter Engels. I'll take an oath on it. He's always knocking out his pipe careless like. That's right, Uncle Carter. I warned you a plenty you'd set a fire sometime. Yeah? What about the way Josh Brandon's always building up a campfire? Being plumb unconscious when it comes to stamping it out. I didn't build no fire. You're always building a fire. You had one out near the west end of the valley this evening. And you weren't out there yourself smoking your pipe, I suppose. Uncle Josh, Uncle Carter. Keep them fight all time. Not take it easy, both of you. Soon you... Yes. Thunder God make drums. The rain is coming. Here it is. Uh, that good. It put out fire. It's raining. and we're saved. Rain. Oh, sure feels good, don't it? Look at it put out them flames. Uh, mister. This will save a good part of your land. Mister, we're obliged to you. I, I want to ask you. Well? It's about Uncle Josh and Uncle Carter. Do they always fight this way? Always. I must be that something's going to happen soon. And they won't get dangerous. That fire didn't start by itself, mister. You think one of them started it? Oh, I wish I knew. I got a feeling it was done deliberate. And I don't think either one would do something like that. I see. Then suppose later on when the fire's completely out, how don't I go back with you? I want him to ask that very thing. We can look at the cabins and also see what we can learn about how the fire started. I sure wish you would. You trust me. You saved our lives, you and the engine. I know you're masked. I've seen it in the firelight, but... but there's something about you that makes me certain you're a good man. Todd and I'll help all we can. Stars and stripes, what's all that splice? Hey, engine, can you all hear it? What's it mean? <laughs> that animal. Animal? They're leaving the river, going back into the prairie and the forest. Then, then you mean the danger's past, mister? In a few minutes, we can start back ourselves. Yes, the danger is past. That fire I started sure was a Jim Dandy. <laughs> Swept right across the valley. Who's that? Where's my gun? Hey, Scar. Scar, it's me, Denver. Uh, you're lucky you didn't get a bullet in your gizzard, Denver. You know I was coming back. You sent me to look at them two cabins yourself, Scar. They're burnt? To the ground. Too bad that gent on the white horse and the engine roused them out. You recollect we seen them? Well, sure we seen them. We started the fire and rode along right behind it, didn't we? Well, I was hoping that flame would wipe them out. Then you and me could take over the land without nobody stopping well, us. What's the odds? We got a slick scheme to get it anyway. Yeah. You was watching the cabins? Well, they come back. I figured they would. Josh Brandon, Carter Engels, and their niece. Yeah, and the engine and his pod, too. Mm. I don't like them horning in, Scar. Might spoil our setup. Denver, so long as Josh and Carter keep fighting the Civil War, there ain't nothing can stop me. Yeah, so you say. And so I keep right on saying. We've been egging them two on for months. And now we got to make them so plumb boiling they won't stand the sight of one another. I savvy. I'm to tell Brandon it was Carter started the fire? Yeah, with pipe ashes. And I'll leave Carter know I seen Josh do it with a campfire. 
We can fix it so as each other won't tell what they learned, where they learned their facts. So what? Why, they'll get so mad, and, well, one of them will have to leave. But then one will stay, and we still wouldn't have the oh. land. <laughs> Don't worry none about that. We'll have it all right. But, Scar... I tell you, we'll have it. I know how them two are. They act like they can't stay in the sight of each other. But if one goes, the other's going to start aching for the arguments he's missing. You mean the one that's left will pull up stakes anyway? Sure he will, sure. We'll get the land dirt cheap. For practically nothing. Yes, sir. In the next couple of days, we'll talk them so blind mad they'll part company for good. And there ain't nothing can stop it. During the next couple of days, Denver and Scar were always in evidence around the burned-out cabins. They were very helpful in rebuilding the damage done by the fire. But at every opportunity, Scar would talk to Carter Engels. Uh, uh, Engels? Uh, give me them nails, Scar, will you? Oh, sure, sure. But first, I want to tell you something confidential. Huh? You wouldn't have to be building again if your brother-in-law weren't so all fired careless. Yeah. You mean that blue-coated Yankee, Josh Brandon? Yeah, it was him started the prairie to blaze. Uh, one of his campfires, I suppose. Well, I seen it from pretty far off. Time I got to it, the flames was racing. But I seen how it started. Oh, that doggone old billy goat. I don't know what I stick around for. Of course, you mustn't say who told you. And Denver, whenever he found the chance, would talk quietly to Josh Brandon. You mean it was Carter's pipe like I figured? It must have been, Josh. It must have been. I seen him wandering there. Heard him knock out his pipe again a rock. The rebel idiot! Of course, I didn't think nothing of it, and... Then when I seen the flames, it was too late to do nothing. I tell you, I'm getting fed up with that secessionist rebellion, union Josh, fight. Josh, not so loud. After all, this ain't my quarrel. You can do as you feel about it, but leave me out. Day after day, the two schemers poisoned the old men against each other. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, out trying to discover how the fire had started, talked about it too. Santo, we've got to find out exactly how this fire started. Uh, we look close. Josh believes Carter did it. Uh, another way round, too. There are more bad words between them each day. I don't know where they get their ideas from. But I'm certain they're mistaken. Tonto think that way. I wonder, Kima Sabi. Huh? Have you noticed those two men, Denver and Scar? Um, Tonto not like them. There's something about them, Tonto. Apparently, they're friendly, very helpful. And yet... Uh. Them sly like fox. Yes, we. What's that? You find something? Take a look at this, Kimasabi. It's a spur from a man's boot. That's right. If the fire started here. It's ten to one. The man who started it is missing a spur. This spur, Tonto. This It's young squaw. She's in a hurry. To your horse, Tonto. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. We'll go to meet her, Tonto. But not a word about the spur we found. Uh-huh. Yep. We'll keep that a secret. Remember, not a word. I have my reasons. Now, here she comes. Yes, ma'am, come quick. What is it? Hurry, please hurry. Uncle Josh and Uncle Carter had a terrible argument. They're drawn straws to see which one stays and which one goes. One stay and one go? Please, you've got to make them stop. I love them both. Please try to make them stop. Come on, Silver. Tyler, we're heading for the cabins. All right, then, it's agreed. One that draws a short straw gets out. Bag and baggage. Not so much talk, you old rebel. Hold out the straw. I got the ends in my hand here. Go on, take one. A pleasure. There. Hold yours up. Uh, uh, I got the short one. That means I... Yeah. Dog on your hide. Why don't you apologize? Apologize? Me? To you? Never. No, sir. Stubborn as a coot. All right, then. Get out and good riddance. I'm leaving. I wouldn't stay within 50 miles of you. And the sooner you leave, the better. You and your Confederate ways. Don't are... talk to me about Confederate ways. They're a heap sight better than some I know. Get out. I'm getting. I'm getting pronto. I've stood all I'm a going to stand for you, Josh Brandon. Now step to one side and let me get. Uncle Josh, Uncle Carter. Sally's told me what you plan to do. Well, why not be sensible about this? Mister, I've heard enough. I ain't taking nothing more. Well, what are you standing around for? You do the short straw. There's the door. Uncle Carter, no. Out of my way. Out of my way, all of you. Sure, I'm going. Please, Uncle Carter, where would you go? Don't worry about me, Sally. I'll write you. But I'm going, understand? I'm going. I ain't never coming back. Never. 
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. With Carter Engels gone, Josh should have been happy. But strangely enough, he seemed to miss the bitter arguments he had with his old partner. Several weeks went by, and then... Uncle Josh! Uncle Josh! And shake, Sally, what are you so flippantly jibbing about? It's come, I got it! Uh, what's that you're waving around? It's a letter from Uncle Carter. It come to town on the stagecoach. He said... Says... I'm interested. Oh, it's just that I... I tell you that I ain't interested in that uh, secessionist. Well, I figured you might be, but I'm sorry I bothered you, Uncle Josh. Hold on there. Huh? I, I thought you said you wasn't interested. Well, I ain't. Just wondering, that's all. Let me see what that shouting ornery pool cat's been up to. <laughs> I hope he's starving. Hmm. Can't much of a letter. He, he says he's all right and, and that he misses me. I can read. Can't see he writes any too good, though. Here. Here, take it. Just like I said, I ain't interested. Well, I thought maybe you might be a little, but if you ain't... Now let's yeah. talk about something more pleasant. Hmm. I seen Denver leaving a while ago. Yeah. I, uh... Sally, I figure I'm going to sell this place to Denver. What? Why not? It ain't worth nothing. I'm sick and tired of it. But what about Uncle Carter? It ain't here's none of it. It's mine to sell if I want to. All mine. Oh, Uncle Josh, I, I wish you wouldn't. Mad men don't think Denver's a good man. Oh, he don't, huh? I suppose he favors Carter Engels. He likes Uncle Carter, and and you too, Uncle Josh. Uh, Besides, he says he knew something about how that fire really started. The masked man? He says he don't want to tell what it is yet, but you here and Uncle Carter off in Amarillo. He says it concerns both of you. Yeah? I'll wager he found tracks to prove the fire started when Carter knocked out his pipe. Where at is the masked man? Uncle Josh, he's sitting not now. Where is he? I want to find out. He's next to the corral. He was there just at... Uh, next to the corral? I don't see him. Hmm, that's funny. I don't either. Hey, Sally, look. His white horse ain't around. And neither is the engine's paint horse. Oh, Uncle Josh, he, he's gone. This way to Amarillo, Kimosabe. You saw that letter, Tonto. It was postmarked from Amarillo. And it was from Carter Engels. And then we find him. Tell that we've got to convince Engels to return. Ah, uh, him plenty stubborn. They're both stubborn, Kimasabi. Ah. Uh, why you not show him spur? No, Tonto. That spur proves that neither Engels nor Brandon started that prairie fire. But if I had shown the spur to Josh Brandon, he still wouldn't make up his quarrel with Carter Engels. Ah, uh, not true. But we will show the spur to Carter. Now, here's where we part company, Tonto. Huh? You go back and find Scar in Denver. I want them to learn that Carter's returning. Oh, me not savvy. Maybe him not come back. He will, Kimasabi. He will. After I talk to him, I'll meet you later. Adios. Get him up, Skull. Hello, Silver Hawaii. All right, masked man. They all located me, sure enough. But by Jeff Davis's right hand, I ain't making up with Josh Brandon. You're going back, Carter. This quarrel between you is foolish. Hmm. Sky told you Josh set that fire. And Denver told Josh you did it. Uh, what? As a matter of fact, neither one of you did it. Mister, you mean that ornery Josh Brandon had nothing to do with that prairie fire? Exactly. You mean we called each other names over a pure accident? It wasn't an accident. Well, eh? Uh... Well, then who the dickens done it? Suppose I tell you Josh is planning to sell the land to Denver and Scar. Why, he can't. He, he won the land from you. Well, yes. Besides, it's going to be sold for practically nothing. I don't savvy what you're driving at, mister. I want to show you something. Tonto and I found this spur where the fire started. The man who started that fire wore it. Mask man, I know whose that is. So that was a scheme. You'll come back with me? I sure will. We'll be on the trail in ten minutes. And all the time I was blaming Josh Brandon. <laughs>
Mister, I've been figuring. Yes? I reckon I've been a doggone old fool arguing with Josh Brandon about a war that's all settled. It's about time you reached that conclusion. But there's one thing troubles me. What's that? I'll apologize to Josh. I'll eat humble pie. But supposing he don't want no part of it. Supposing he's still madder than hops. You see that rider coming toward us? Yeah, yeah your engine part. When he tells me what he's learned, I'll tell you how to make sure Josh is willing to make up. Howdy! Kimosabe! Howdy, engine! Oh! Denver and Scar know that Engels is returning, Tonto? And like you say, Tonto, tell them. You mean you Just that... listen. You heard them talk about it, Tonto? That's right. After me leave, me go back quiet, like owl. Me listen. It would upset all their plans to take that land if Carter should return, wouldn't it? Mm, then make sure him not return. Well, you mean them coyotes going to try and stop me? That's right. Let them try. I'll let them That's not... just what we're going to do, Carter. Wh- what? We're going to let them try. They plan to use force, Tonto? Uh, them shoot, maybe. I see. Oh, an ambush. That's what they figure, huh? Yes. Now, listen to me. Tonto and I are going ahead to Josh Brandon's. You're to camp here for one day. But what are you going to... Sarah and Denver will likely be waiting for you to get near before they go after you. Oh, that's right. Me hear them. By camping here, you'll give us time to talk to Josh and your niece, Sally. You mean you got a plan, mister? I have, as I told you before. And it all fits in with ending this quarrel between you and Josh. Yeah? You'll do as I suggest? Yeah. I'll camp here for a day, then go on? Yes. Suppose I walk right into them coyotes. That's exactly what you're going to do. Huh? And once more, when Josh comes to the rescue... He'll think he's come too late. He'll come to rescue me? Yes. Mister, if you can get that done, you're, you're a miracle man. And, eh? What do you mean, he'll think he's come too late? Listen closely. Here's what I mean. How long we wait, Kimosabe? It's one day now. Quiet, Tonto. Here comes Denver. Hey! Up. Well? So you come back here, huh? That's our business, Denver. All right, all right. Don't go on the prod. I don't hold with no mass, man, but as long as you don't bother me, I ain't bothering you none. I uh, just wanted to know where you've been. Near Amarillo. Uh, Why? Amarillo, huh? Ain't that where old Carter Engels went to? It was. It was? You mean he ain't there now? No, he isn't. He's on his way back. On his way... Uh, I mean, uh, ain't that interesting? Is it? Why, sure, sure. Uh, not that it matters to me, but do you think he's planning to make up? He should be on the trail again today. We passed his camp last night. Oh, that close, is he? Maybe here by sundown. Sundown? Well, that's only a couple hours away, and if you'll pardon me, mister, I got important business. <laughs> Him go like rabbit, eh? <laughs> Going to get scars, Hunter. Then ride out to meet Carter. Now, come on. It's time for us to see Josh. Let's go. Get him up, Scar. Come on, Silver. What's that, Mask Man? What are you saying? Carter coming back here? And, and Scar and Denver on the way to, to kill him? That's correct, Miss Sally. I don't believe it. It don't make sense. Why should he be coming back? To make up with you, Josh. Nonsense. Stuff and nonsense. And this here wild talk about Scar and Denver. Well, why don't... Scar and Denver set that fire. They wanted to separate you two and get the land. It wasn't Carter. But but Scar told Tonto and I found this. It belonged to the man who started that fire. A spur. Mr. That... That belongs to Scar. To Scar. He set that fire, Josh, and he and Denver brought that quarrel about. Why, of all the ornery low down, I was going to sell this land to them hombres. I was Uncle going Josh, to... we can't stand around. We've got to save Uncle Carter. Mask man, what can we do? How are we going to save... Nigger's horse is all ready. You come. There's your answer, Josh. Come along. Uh, let me bring my gun. Hurry, hurry. Uh, you get on horse. Hit and follow me. We'll cut around the trail and attack from behind. Yippee! It's just like it was when I was riding with Sheridan's cavalry. Yes, Uncle Josh, only this time you're riding to save a rebel. Get him up, Joe. Hell, Silver Hawaii! Shatters are beginning to stretch, Scar. Well, then strain your eyes. We ought to see that old gent pretty sudden. Rain up. You spotted him? Look yonder. I don't see nothing but night coming. And you told me to use my eyes. Can't you see where the trail is? I see him, Denver. 
A single rider. Must be Carter. Yeah. Couldn't be better. The setting sun's behind us, so as he can't spot us in the glare. You're going right to him? Yeah, there ain't no need to hurry, Denver. <laughs> just loose your gun. Yeah, it's loose. We'll just go along easy like, since he can't tell who we are. We pull guns and let blast as soon as we get close enough, huh? That's right. Keep traveling. Well, I'll be... You hear what he's singing, Scar? Yeah. I guess he stopped being a rebel anymore, huh? Just as well him and Josh Braden don't ever get together now. <laughs> All right, now. Just draw your gun and be ready to... What in blazes? Shoot, Scar, shoot! Oh, my hand! You're not trying to have a shot. The game's up, Scar. You and Denver try to ambush Carter. I don't know what you're driving at, mister. We, we know all about it. You started that fire. Tana and I will take them to jail. Mash man, you sure beat them to the draw. <laughs> hey, Carter, you old renegade. If you want to apologize to me, maybe I'll... Uncle Carter. He, he's laying on the ground. Come on, boy. He, he's been shot. One of them bullets must have hit him. Uncle Carter. Carter. Dog on your hide, you, you've been shot. You've been shot before I could tell you I was always mighty fond of you. I never meant them arguments we had. I didn't mean nothing by them. Well, you, you are every bit as good an American as I am, and I... Can... All right, Josh Brandon, now you said that, I can get up. I wasn't blazing. Uncle Carter, you're, you're not hurt, you weren't shot. No, nary a nick, Sally. But you was laying on the ground. It, it was a masked man's idea. He told me to pretend like I took a bullet. He said it was the only way I'd ever get you all to say the things I know you wanted to say. In your heart. About me, I mean. You, uh, still feel the same? The same? Carter... Everything I said before goes double. From now on, you and me are going to patch things up perfect. Agreed? Oh, it sure is, Josh. Doggone it, the North and the South made up long ago. So what are we waiting for? I tell you this, it sure is a great country. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.